Hello and welcome. I am Marcus Egger, and I am going to be giving my speech today over a procedural change for the Dow Chemicals in Cedro, Texas. My procedure change is I want to have more training at a chemical plant. First, first off, we're going to start off. What is a chemical plant? Think about it. what a chemical plant is. Do you really know the true meaning of what a chemical plant is and how a chemical plant operates? I can tell you from first-hand experience, I do know what a chemical plant is because I actually work at the Dow Chemical site in Cedro, Texas. I think about everything going on every single day when I punch in the clock. I hope everything that I know about is comes from first-hand experiences when I punch in the gate every single day when I go to work. So, do you know what a chemical plant, how things work there, or what they do? I, what I think about when I punch in every day is I hope that everyone is operating the plant efficiently and safely because I want to, I'm too young to die and I want to go home safely to my friends and my family. So did I, did I get you to think a little bit? Thought I might. Because these are lifestyle changes that safety and that more safety should be implemented to help a person go home safely and more efficiently to their families every single day. How does it pertain to you, you might ask? Well, it may, in one way or another, you may know a family member or have a family friend or a co-worker that you know that may work at a chemical plant. And it might be someone's careless mistake that may cause this person to lose their life unexpectedly due to a chemical plant, chemical plant accident. So although there is training at the collegiate level, I am going to, I am hoping after the end of hearing the end of this speech that there is more, you have a better understanding why more safety is needed for a chemical plant and how things are, a procedural change should be help a chemical plant be operate more safely and efficiently. So first off, we're going to look at the training at the collegiate level. By doing this, we're going to look at the college degree plan from the Victoria College, and then after we're done looking at the degree plan, we are, we'll look at a periodical from Jack Shaw on topics for uh, typical employee training. First off, I'm going to look. We're going to look at the degree plan from Victoria College. The Process Technology Degree Plan states that the program at the Victoria College prepares a student for as a process technician or operator. This process technician is trained to operate, analyze, and troubleshoot industrial processes in order to produce products safely and efficiently. They gather information using instruments that monitor the process conditions, such as pressure, temperature, level, and flow rates. They operate at various types of mechanical equipment, such as pumps, valves, compressors, and applied quality principles to produce products that meet the customer satisfaction. Process technicians work on both indoors and outdoors along chemical engineers, maintenance personnel, and other professionals. They will, they will be expected to their knowledge of computers, math, physics, chemistry, to monitor and troubleshoot plant operations. Strong communication skills are also required, as well as the ability to write, give oral presentations, and exercise effective listening skills in order to succeed as a process technician. And upon completion of the process degree program, a student will receive an associate's applied science degree, will be prepared to as a process technician in various local industries, including a petrochemical plants, refinery, oil and gas productions, and power generation. I will have passed out after the, I am done giving the speech a good copy of the degree plan for students who are wishing to give one more information on the process tech degree. So we'll look at the classes now on what, how they are specific to the degree plan. Well, here's your freshman classes. We have your a student on course, which is a brief summary of the classes uh, to get you prepared for college. An internal process technology, a safety, health, and environment one, a math class from the core cur curriculum, a computer class, a fundamentals to electronics, a PE class, a process instrumentation one, 
process tech equipment, where it's equipment classes where you're going to learn mostly about your equipment as you'll see in the field. And also a safety health environment too, which is more toward how fires and how you can prevent a fire. Uh, introduction to chemistry and a phys uh, physical education or PE class again. Then we have your summer classes. You can take either in summer one or two, or take them just in one semester, where you have your human relations, or your humanities, or visual arts class. And then your sophomore level classes. You have your quality class, process technology three systems, your physics class, composition one, which is your 1301 English, a speech class, and then in the spring semester, you can take industrial processes, or you can opt out of the class and have a co-op set up through a plant or a local refinery. Process technology three operations, where you actually run the units at the college level. Process troubleshooting, where you have a scenario and you have to fix the scenario. Composition two, our technical writing, and a social behavior science class. So. Now for the, we'll look at Jack Shaw and how he says that topics for uh, typical for employee training is that communication is important, computer skills are important, diversity, ethics, quality, and safety are also important. So now that we know that the individual learning at the collegiate level and what the main points by Shaw says about expecting the, in the behavior sense for individuals, We'll now look at the proper training for individuals. Robert, best, Robert Griffin dis best describes how individual training in his periodic call, how, train, how to train employees. Griffin suggests the following on the on-job site training. Give the employees to be trained the material in advance. Assign the ambassador or coach to the trainee. Be very clear and specific on what they, they're expected to do in the training. And be sure to take time to explain the procedures and policies to the individual. When giving the trainee, have him or her perform this task being taught. And finally, encourage and give recognition to the employee being trained. Now that we learned about the training on the on-site by the employer, we're now going to look at the disadvantage that Dow Chemicals and Seadrift is facing. And with great, great success comes also a disadvantage in our failure. So the disadvantage right now at Dallas Chemicals is facing is, has anyone heard of the Eagle for Shell? The Eagle for Shell is outlined right here on the screen. It reaches from El Paso all the way up to College Station. It is a oil and gas formation underneath the ground where they are drilling horizontally to drilling oil and gas wells. So most employees are losing, Dow is losing employees because of the higher paying wages through the oil field right now because they cannot compete with all these, this production going on and employees are losing, leaving Dow to go work for better pay and Dow cannot up the pay for employees because they are a multi-million comp dollar company and an oil field is just right there with the competition with them. So why might I bring up, why, why I bring this about, about Dow company, uh, about the Eagle for Shell, is because it is true even in Saudi Arabia. According to Gary Malio in his periodical, he states that his country has adopted has adapted to this change also. Gary, Gary said that the engineers they hired 30 years ago are now close to retirement and have replaced a few and will emerge to the next five to close to 10 years of training to train more, employ, uh, train more engineers for the Saudi Arabia company. To respond to these challenges, Saudi Amako saw in 2010 a year for transition. A 140,000 square foot training cylinder, cil facility was constructed in the Duran Saudi, Saudi Arabia to train Sadafios geoscientists and petrochemical engineers. 
So now that we've looked at the bad and downside to the current economic situation that Texas is, South Texas is facing, we'll now look at how training can be very beneficial and to the Dow employees that work there in order to get and maintain their yearly salary bonuses at the end of every year. According to Annabelle Rittman, she suggests that to employees should ask themselves one the following question every day of every shift. How what is you, your value position? Know your customers, potential employers, and projector heads. Know your products and services. Know your competitors and distill customer oriented orientation proposition. So after learning the good side about the training and how it's very beneficial, let's review and conclude that training and more training can be very beneficial to employees. So, well, in today's speech, I hope that you understand the benefits of having training at the collegiate level and understood how certain skills are very beneficial to, for employees and learn the benefits of having on-site training and how certain things can be good and bad for a company since they cannot overcome and adapt to the economic effect on pay rates in the South Texas region. Finally, we looked at the positive side. So the next time you see someone in, the, in a jumpsuit or with an FRC shirt, which reads one of the following em, uh, emblems, Lionel Basil, Formosa Plastics, Dow Chemicals, DuPont, or Enios, or even Invista, think about these employees because these companies are in the Victoria region and these are people put to work in this region for their safety and want to go home safe to their families because safety is number one at all chemical plants and that all employees should follow and want to maintain all safe practices so they can go see their families one day again, hopefully safely going home. Thank you.